So you want to build a decentralized application on the Ethereum blockchain, but you are wondering how you should approach the problem. So in this video, I'm going to explain what are the different steps to build a decentralized application. After you watch this video, you will understand the whole development process. Hey, I'm Julian and on my channel in the blogs, I teach blockchain development and how to become a blockchain developer. A decentralized application has some similarities with a web application, but at the same time, it's a little bit different. So we'll be able to reuse some of the development technique of web application, but we'll need to adapt them a little bit. In general, in the world of software, there are two ways to approach application design. The first way is to start from the data layer and progressively build up to the UI. And the other way is to start from the UI and progressively go down to the data layer. Well, if your application is really data intensive with a complex data model, you probably want to start from the data layer. Otherwise, you can start from the UI. It also depends if you have a background of backend developer or frontend developer. But in the case of decentralized application, there is an extra difficulty because we're going to split the data between a smart contract on the blockchain and some centralized server outside the blockchain. So we will be heavily constrained by what we can do by the blockchain. So from this reason, I recommend to start from the data layer. The first step is to understand your data model. Your main task will be to decide what you put on the smart contract and what you put outside of the blockchain. So anything which is really critical to your application should be on the blockchain. For example, if you have any economy part, any payment system, then it should be on the blockchain. Also, if you have any content that you want to protect against any censorship, it should be on the blockchain. However, for things like user settings, you can put them outside the blockchain. But there is a caveat because storing data on the blockchain is very expensive. So we try to minimize the data that we put on the blockchain to the bare minimum. For example, let's say that you are building a decentralized Facebook. So you need to store all the posts of all the users with text and images. The problem is that text and images can take a lot of space. It would be way too expensive to put this on a smart contract. So what you would do in this case is you would put the metadata on your smart contract and the actual content, so the text and the images, you will put this outside the blockchain, for example, on AWS S3. But you still want to link up this content to your smart contract. So the way you're going to do this is by calculating a data fingerprint of this content. So you're going to use some hashing function and you're going to store these hashes inside your smart contract. So these hashes allow you to compare the data that is retrieved from the outside to what you have in the smart contract. So if anybody tried to tamper with this content outside the blockchain, then you will be able to figure it out. And at the same time, these hashes don't take up too much space on the blockchain. So once you have figured out your data model and you know which data goes where, the next step is to start coding your smart contract. So for that, you're going to need a few tools. The first tool you're going to use is Remix, which is an online IDE for Solidity. Solidity is the most popular programming language for smart contract on Ethereum. Remix is good for beginner and as a playground, but when you do a serious smart contract project, usually you want to use a framework called Truffle. Another thing you will need is a blockchain simulator for local development. The most popular one is called Ganache. Fortunately, if you use Truffle, it already includes Ganache. You don't need to install it separately. So on my channel in the blogs, I have a couple of videos that explain all of this. I have a full series on Solidity, the programming language for smart contract. I also have an introduction for Truffle, a full series on Ganache, and also a full series on Open Zeppelin, which is a very popular library for Solidity smart contract. The next step is to test your smart contract. Once you deploy your smart contract to the blockchain, it's not possible to change it anymore. On top of it, it potentially can manipulate money. So if there is a bug, the consequences can be really catastrophic. 
So you really want to make sure that your smart contract is bug free before you deploy to the actual blockchain. So you need to test thoroughly your smart contract and fortunately you can do this very easily with the Truffle framework. So you will go over the code of your smart contract and test every function and make sure that you cover all the different use cases. You can use a library that is called OpenZipLink Test Helper with a couple of very useful utility functions for testing your smart contract. And you can check out this video where I explain how to test a 3D smart contract. So when you're going to run your test, first you're going to run your test on your local development blockchain that is called Ganache. That's the thing I talked about in the previous section on smart contract development. So Ganache is very convenient for local development, but this is not a very realistic testing environment. From time to time, it's also a best practice to also run your test on a public test net. A public test net is a sort of mirror or of the actual Ethereum blockchain that we call mainnet, but on testnet, you can break things. It's fine. It's like a safe playground to experiment on all the ether that is on this testnet. It's not real ether. So you can make a mistake. This is absolutely fine. So there are several testnet and actually I have another video that explains which testnet you should choose for your test. In order to deploy on testnet, you need to run your own Ethereum node that is connected to this public testnet and it can be a bit challenging, so most people use an API service called Infra. This is very simple. You create a free account, they give you an API key, and after you are able to deploy the testnet. Once you have tested your smart contract, it's time to build the front end of your decentralized application. Strictly speaking, a front end is not necessary because it's possible to interact with a smart contract with your command line, but Realistically, your end user will never going to do this. They need a nice web interface or mobile interface so that they can interact with your smart contract. So you need to build this. For most decentralized applications, the front end is a web front end, but if you want, you can also build a mobile application. In order to interact with your smart contract, you can hit directly the API of Ethereum, but this is quite complicated. So it's better to use a library like Web3. Web3 will allow you to very easily interact with your smart contract without knowing all the details of the Ethereum API. You can use any front-end framework that you usually use for web application like React, Vue, Angular, etc. I personally recommend React because this is the most compatible with other tools. Another framework you can look at for front-end is Drizzle. Drizzle will allow you to keep the UI of your decentralized application constantly up to date with your smart contract. Internally, it monitors the state of the blockchain and whenever there is a transaction that interests you, it's going to to update an internal Redux store and after that all you have to do is to connect your UI to this Redux store and it will constantly stay up to date. So I also have other videos that explain you all of this. In particular I have a full series on Web3 and another video for how to build a decentralized application with React and one of the videos explain how you can integrate React with the Drizzle framework I just mentioned. The next step is to deploy on mainnet. So mainnet is the actual blockchain of Ethereum where you manipulate real ether. So you don't want to make any mistake on this blockchain. For mainnet, like for testnet, you also need to run your own Ethereum node and it's even harder for mainnet than for testnet. So again, most people use the Infra API for that. For deploying to mainnet, you need to use real ether. So if during your deployment there is any mistake and something goes wrong, you will lose real ether. So that means you will lose actual money. So you need to be careful. The tooling for smart contract development is not that great yet, but there is something that is being built by the creator of the Truffle framework and that is called Truffle Team. So at the time of releasing this video, I believe they are still in beta, but very soon it's gonna be ready. So you're gonna have a nice GUI to manage your smart contract development. So that's gonna be much easier. After you've deployed decentralized application, is this all you have to do? Well, no, because now you have to manage it. First, you need to monitor errors. It's possible that some user misuse your decentralized application and send some transaction that fail. 
So you need to be aware of this. For web application, there is a very famous service called New Relic that monitors the error that happened in the front end. And for a decentralized application, there is a service that is called MoASIF. I never know how to pronounce it, but this is this one. So it's basically going to inject some JavaScript code in your decentralized application front end and it's going to report any error that happened and you will be able to inspect all of this data. You also need to manage the evolution of your smart contract protocol. So I've said before that once you deploy a smart contract to the blockchain, it's not possible to update its code and it's true, but there are still some technique to sort of go around this limitation and still be able to update your smart contract by using a system of proxy smart contract. I'm not gonna go into the detail of this, but if you are interested in this, you can check out OpenZeppelin SDK. This is different from the OpenZeppelin Solidity library. So if you start to introduce update, you also need to think about governance because in a decentralized application, you can have any centralized part because that kind of break the promise of decentralization. So governance basic, basically is a mechanism that where you allow the community to vote on the evolution of the protocol. Typically, your user will own some token of your project and at regular interval, they will be able to vote. And based on the result of this vote, the smart contract is going to automatically update to another version. If you're interested in governance, you can check out the Aragon project. Next, you can check out this playlist where I give other tips for how to design your decentralized application. And if you want a full coding tutorial where we build an application from A to D, smart contract test and front end, I actually have a full video where we build five decentralized applications. Check it out.